thing comes with reading the book of Revelation. See, it's the enemy that will lie to you and tell you, oh, don't read that. See, we got Jehovah's Witnesses that'll tell you, oh, stay away from that. Demons will come out. That is a lie from the pits of hell. He said he determines the end from the beginning. If these things happen, we had Noah warning people, running back and forth, warning people. They were given over to the cares of the world. They didn't hear. They didn't want to hear what Noah had to say. The Bible says they did what they wanted to do up until the last day. And it was too late. But I'm here to tell you, we are in the final dispensation. We are in the final dispensation. We are in the last day. And I'm knocking. The Lord is knocking. But I'm going to tell you, he's not going to come through and knock your door down on your heart. He says, I knock at your heart. He's not going to be disrespectful because he's a gentleman. He's going to knock at your heart. And he's going to want to know if you open it. Because see, the first thing that he gave man was dominion, which was power. The power to choose. He's not going to make you do it. But we have to be able to choose today. Who are you going to serve? Where you stand? Where you stand today? I ask the people today, where do you stand with Christ? Where do you stand? Do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? Some people say they know him. I don't think you do. Do you know you? He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Do you get on your knees at night? Or are you in front of that reality show television that y'all don't know that the televisions are called programs? It's called program, people, for a reason. It's programming and conditioning your mind. See, that's why everywhere you look is a reality show. They want you in front of the television so you won't see that these things that are going on in the world, you want to know about somebody else's world. A letter, a house of a letter, housewives, and all that foolishness, all that mess. And our city, our city is laid with shooting and killing because you won't get on your knees and pray. Call out on the Lord. Lord, help us. He said, the people, if my people will call up on my name. He said, whosoever will call up on his name shall be saved. Whosoever, black man, white man, Jew, Gentile, black and these, highs 57, whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. Nobody don't want to preach the truth. You want to do what you want to do. I'd have been in the club. I done did that. I'd have been the party. But listen, when his spirit started being poured out, he was calling people out of the world. I want to know why you're still in these clubs. See, he gave them what he sent in warnings all over the world. Just last night, there was killings in clubs. He's telling you people, come out of the world, I'm coming back. Come out of the world, I'm coming back. I'm trying to wake you up, people. It's night hour of judgment. There's night hour signs all over the world. Every time, let me give you a hint. Every time you see a news story and the number nine is in it, God is speaking. He died at the ninth hour and he's using that same number to get people's attention. Now I'm supposed to have been staying over here 15 minutes. I think I've been here about 45. Because somebody needed to hear it today. Somebody needed to be saved. Somebody needed to be delivered from bondage. Because men are preaching lies to you. They're not telling you the things that is coming up on this earth. They're not telling you that the things that is coming to pass. He spoke these prophecies over 2,000 plus years ago. And he said it would happen. If he said it would happen, I'm here to tell you, he's making it good. you got to be able to be on his side. There's a kingdom of God and a kingdom of darkness. And in, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, he lists all those who won't make it into the kingdom of heaven. Adulterers, adulterers, infeminate, gays, lesbians, whatever you want to have it. And the list goes on. Read it for yourself. I challenge you to read it for yourself. He said all those will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, uh, if you don't inherit the kingdom of God, what are you going to inherit? The kingdom of darkness. 
because you know there is a prince of this world. I saw a video the other day where there was a man standing out street preaching, and he had a microphone just like I do. And when you're preaching the truth, you got demons that'll come up to you. This demon came up to him, and let me show you. He looked at that man and that preacher of righteousness. He didn't say he wasn't saved one bit. That demon looked at him and he said, "Let me tell you something. You need to move off this street corner. You need to put that microphone down because I represent the prince of this world." What? Who? Who is the prince of this world? Satan. See, there's demons that are walking the earth right now. There's demons. You know, you see the little cartoons where you got you you, you, you got the angel on one shoulder and you and you got you have the Satan on another shoulder. See, Satan will tell you, man, what she talking about ain't true. None of that is true. I challenge you to pick up your Bible. See, the Lord will send people around to prophesy. He will send people around to give your word when you need it. Because he's a faithful God. He's a just God. And he's going to take care of his people. He said, I will set up shepherds. Ha, that's why I'm here. He will set up shepherds. He's going to feed his flock. Because he has some that has a great conviction that ain't afraid to preach the gospel. He said, if you're going to boast any man, boast in anything, boast in God, I boast in God. I'm just a sinner saved by grace who was taken up laden out of my sin. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people better get ready. You see me on these street corners, the things that's getting ready to take place on the earth are things that people ain't never seen before. There's going to be people in their houses preaching like I do. I preach from my house. There's going to be people preaching on the ground in tents. There's going to be people preaching on their back porch. There are going to be people preaching everywhere because he said he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So don't get this made. Don't despise his word. He's sending it. And the reason why he's sending it because of the things that's on this world and because we got same-sex marriage. And we know that when he come up, when the, 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 the gays and the lesbians come up on the churches and they want to get married, let's say we have a preacher that is rooted and grounded in his word. And, and, that, and the gay couple come to him and say, hey, can we get married? And that preacher said, I'm sorry. I'm the gospel of Christ. And I don't believe in that. You're going to have to get somebody. That preacher is going to be locked up. Did he not say that there were going to be people offended by you? He said they're going to send you to jail. Did he not say it? Okay, so therefore, if those preachers don't preach it, if they under the government, what is it, C O one five three, whatever that is, that means that they gonna be shut down. But guess what? Preachers like me that stand out on the street corner, we ain't under the government. We're not under that. We can preach anywhere, wherever. See, the Lord was omnipotent. It's melodic, the flow through that Bible. Man, I'm telling you, he set it up that way. He knew there would be days like this. He knew there would come a time for days like this. So we have to be ready. We have to be ready. We can't be sitting under these false preachers, ravenous wolves. They'll sit there all day. Oh, 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 Lord, I ain't against him. Because let me tell you, he said, in the last days, you know how to keep your spirit filled? In, in, in Matthew 25, it talks about the, the, the wise and the foolish. The wise and the foolish wise. And, and if you look in Colossians, when you look in Ephesians, it tells you how to keep your spirit filled. He started expounding, and I didn't get it at the first. And so the Holy Spirit opened up my eyes, and he showed me. He says that we are to be singing songs, spiritual songs. Speaking hymns, wow, speaking hymns, and I'm like, speaking hymns and spiritual songs, why, why most, Lord? And he says, speaking songs, which is the songs of the Bible. Watch this, if you turn that, that, that word around, it is the hands, it's, it's palms. Songs is palms, which means if you're doing it, if you're speaking those songs, if you're speaking those songs, you are in the hands of God. That's the revelation. And let me tell you, you know why he said 
And if you let God arise and his enemies be scattered, if you sing in those songs, you know we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, if you open up your mouth, you open up your mouth and you sing in those spiritual songs, you have no idea that you're letting out weapons of mass destruction, hammers, meat cleavers, Amen. machetes. You're letting out all yes, kinds of stuff. You don't even know it because he says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with spiritual wickedness and rulers. Huh. In high places. In high places. Thank you, wow. When I got that revelation, I said, thank you, God. I'll be singing all day. Come on in the room. I'll be singing all day. So sing all day. Sing. Sing. Make melodies in your heart like he said. That's how you keep your spirit filled. See, so you'll have people that tell you, oh, speaking in tongues keep your, uh, sp your spirit filled. Uh, speaking in tongues, yes, we, must, we, we need to be doing that. We need to be doing that. But that is not the only thing that keeps our spirit filled. The Bible says, speaking in tongues, edify it man, which means it builds that man up, meaning it's building you up. And when you speak it in tongues, you're speaking to whom he said? To him. Oh, yes. We're speaking to him. And Satan, I know what, what, what you're saying. No. Why did he give us that? Because he knew the plans of the enemy. He knew the plans of the enemy. We got to be able to stand in this evil day. I had a vision while I was standing on the back of a porch preaching with a horn. And I do have a bull horn. And uh, there were black men, white men, and all kinds of men abroad. And they were happy to hear the word. I didn't understand it now, but now I do. Now I do because I'm seeing his manifestation. I'm seeing his manifestation being poured out. He's looking for people with a bold spirit, with the spirit of Elijah, that's going to be able to stand in this evil day. Have it on your helmet of salvation, your breastplate of righteousness, your Lord girded up with the truth, which is what? The word of God. Your feet shuddered with the gospel of peace unto righteousness. Hallelujah. Okay? In your right hand, that shield of faith. In your left hand, the sword of God which is that double-edged sword, that word of God that is going to pierce, pierce, pierce the heart of man, pierce that soul of the unbeliever, pierce that soul that, uh, of, of, that has went back into the world, that backslide. See, he has people out here piercing hearts, preaching the gospel, trying to let you know, I'm coming, people. I'm coming. Get ready. Get ready. We can't. We don't have time to be sitting in churches, putting on all these programs, having more programs than DVDs and DVRs. You can't be doing that. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. <laughs> we need to preach the gospel. We need to preach the truth. There needs to be more people like me standing out here on these highways and byways, shopping centers, malls, wherever they can, preaching the gospel. If it's this much presence of God in the earth realm, where do you think that lead the enemy? He said, let God arise and the enemies will be what? Scattered. Scattered. Yeah. That means they ain't going to be nowhere around. When light comes in darkness, darkness, flee. When you, all we have to do is turn on our light switch within us. That darkness is going to flee. You guys, I'm here to tell you, it's time, if you haven't been one, to be praying. He said, pray without ceasing in these last days. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Look, there are a lot of, if there, there's a lot of churches that's going on. Thank you, thank you. There are a lot of churches that is going on that are not preaching. They're not getting their people ready. They're not tell, telling you, hey, you need to save some water. You need to get you some water. You need to stock up on some water. Uh, 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 you, you need to put up some food. There's going to be food crisis coming. Yeah. There's going to be famines. Did he not say there was going to be famines? Huh? There's going to be famines. Pray over your food. Pray over your food. Pray over your children. <laughs> I'm prophesying right now. 
Pray over your children. The enemy is taking a lot of kids these days because he wants the parents mad at God. He wants to turn the heart of man. Pray over your children. Pray over your food. you got to believe in, 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 in the Bible, where in Mark, where it says any deadly thing that you drink. I prophesied on my channel that I saw a, a child sitting in the bed. And this, whatever it was, was giving this child something out of this dark box bottle. And I told him, I said, look, I you need to pray over your children. The enemy is getting ready to poison kids. And it wasn't even a week later. There was a video. There was, uh, uh, there was uh, not a video. There was a news story where these kids went to a Applebee's, went to a restaurant, and they was drinking apple juice. And they was crying and screaming and bleeding out of the mouth. Throwing up and vomiting. It's horrible. Pray over your children. Pray over your children. Pray over yourselves. Cover your homes. Cover your houses with the blood of Jesus. And just like in the days of Noah, just like in the beginning, the spirit of death is looming the earth. The spirit of death is looming the city. That's why you've seen so much death. We're in the ninth hour judgment. The ninth hour, he said, as a woman in travail, when a woman is in travail, there's labor pain. Did he not say labor pain? So therefore, if we have killing, that means more and more and more killing. But if you want that spirit of death to pass over you, you got to be like those people in the, in, in, back in the, the Old Testament. They had the blood of Jesus covered over their doorposts. You need to be praying at night and say, Lord, I plead. The blood of Jesus. I saturate and saturate my doorposts, my front and my back doorposts, my windows, anything that is left open to the enemy, I saturate it by the blood of Jesus. I saturate it in your blood. When that spirit of death comes riding through that city, riding through your neighborhood, it's going to whoop, look right over you. Yes, Lord. When the Lord showed me those tornadoes early in November of last year, the first time I had it, I, I couldn't get it. Second time I had a dream, I didn't get it. The third time, I was repenting in the dream. Because I, I didn't warn the people. I'm repenting in my dream. Oh, Lord, please forgive me. I didn't know that these tornadoes was going to come and hurt the people like this. Please forgive me. So I got up. I got out of my bed. I went to my YouTube on this tablet. And I put up the look. I warned in Louisiana and all the southern states that there is a tornado that's going to be coming. Beware. Two days later, these tornadoes start erupting. And they're still happening today, right? You saw all those tornadoes rolling through the southern states, Alabama, Mississippi, New Orleans. And when they came through New Orleans, there was a woman, a tornado ripped through her neighborhood. Her house was in the middle of it. Her neighbor's house got hit. The house across the street got hit. The house on the other side of her got hit. And then she was standing in her house by herself. She was 93 years old. They said, the news person asked to say, ma'am, were you scared? She said, no, I was. I believe in the Lord. And all I did was pray. And I believe that he going to save me through all this. What she believed was the truth. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That means he will hide you. No pestilence, no darkness, no destruction at noonday will not bother you. Will not bother you. Get in your scriptures. Get in your word. Get in the book of Psalms. Read the book of Psalms. There's some powerful scriptures to there. That says, let not no evil speaker be established in the earth realm over your life. I just heard last month where there was a woman that prayed. When she found out that a lady had brain tumors and she wanted a husband, that woman prayed for that woman to die so she can have her husband. So you need to be able to have that powerful sword scripture in your heart that say, Lord, as I go to bed, let not no evil speaker be established in the earth realm over my life. Get the scriptures. Get the scriptures of Psalms. Get the scriptures. There's powerful scriptures in the book of Isaiah. There's powerful scriptures everywhere. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He said he created the smith that blows the coal. No weapon that is formed against you shall not prosper. No weapon. He created that smith. He created that devil. Yes. That devil fell from heaven because he had pride. The same 
spirit that is hovering over Louisiana, along with rebellion. Louisiana, that whole word equals to nine. The judgment that I see for our city, our state, it ain't good. I'm talking about it's a worse flood than Katrina. Worse flood than Katrina. When the earthquake comes, it's going to split. Everything's going to flood. I'm talking about you won't even see the city flood. Where do we stand? Where do we stand today? Where are we with Christ? Where are we with Christ? I'm getting ready to wrap up. Is there anybody that's listening on the sound of my voice? They're not saved. You want to get saved? See me. You need prayer? See me. Before we leave, you need prayer. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Yeah. Lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this, sister, Lord, you have sat here, Lord God, and heard every word that came out of our mouth. But, Lord, you said if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Father, I know, Lord God, that she has heard your word. And, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over her. I saturate and saturate her, Lord God, in your blood and her family. Lord, go before her and make her crooked path straight. Father, go before her and take away the things, Lord God, every un godly thing, everything. Purify her heart, oh Lord. Purify her son, her heart, Lord God. Take care of her son in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over her son. Saturate her, Lord God. Be with her, Lord, as she travel on the roads to and fro. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, she is healed, Lord God. Healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. Everything that don't look like you, talk like you, walk like you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, it must go right now. It frees right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. The Lord said all is well with you. All is